Around eight months ago, I graduated with a master's in computer science, where I worked primarily on research in ML and reinforcement learning. Over the past several years, I've worked as a freelance ML engineer. I've worked at large tech companies like Google and Amazon. I've interned in a research specific position. And recently I started my own company. And when you decide to do a master's, you're deciding to put all of that on hold for two years to focus entirely on your studies. Now, despite that fact, I still think going back to school to do my master's is one of the best decisions that I've ever made. So today I wanna to share with you why I think that. In this video, I'll talk a bit about what my experience was like, things like how research worked to how much I got paid. And yes, you can actually get paid for doing a master's. It's pretty cool. Uh, I'll also talk about the factors that you should consider if you're thinking about doing a master's. And this will be things like what you can expect to learn, how it may affect your career and how much it might cost you. And I'll also just share some straightforward advice, like the fact that I do not think most people should do masters in the US, the more on that later. I started my master's program at the University of Alberta in September of 2021, and I finished almost exactly two years later in October of 2023. Over that two year time span, I completed four courses. I did a year of research, which resulted in one research paper and my thesis. And I made a total of $38,399.34 Canadian, and that is after taxes and tuition from the university. So I'll take some time to talk about each of those in a bit more detail. The four courses I took were Machine Learning in the Brain, Reinforcement Learning 2, Real-Time Policy Learning, and Procedural Content Generation via Machine Learning. Now, if you're anything like me and you hear that list, you'll think, that sounds pretty cool, right? And this is one of the big differentiators between doing an undergrad and doing a master's. When you do a master's, you only have to take a few courses, and those courses are typically going to be highly specialized in areas that you specifically find interesting. Not only that, the professors that are teaching them usually also find them very interesting, which means the classes are also typically very engaging and useful. For example, my Reinforcement Learning 2 class was taught by Rich Sutton, which is the guy that literally wrote the textbook on reinforcement learning, uh, and stuff like that is really cool. Courses took up most of my first year, and then the second half of my program was more so focused on research. I did what's called a thesis-based master's program, which means that I only graduate when I publish a thesis. And a master's thesis is typically equivalent to about one solid paper of work. Because of that, lots of students in the department like to first focus on writing a paper, and then they'll turn that paper into a master's thesis to graduate. And working on that research, the paper and the thesis is basically what I did on a day-to-day -day basis. Most of my days, I would get up, I would think about hypotheses, new interesting ideas for my research, and then I would write the code to test those ideas. I would also read papers multiple times a week to keep up with new ideas and just keep ideas flowing. Uh, on top of that, I would have one meeting a week with my supervisors. They would help guide the direction of my research and answer any questions I might have. And then I had one more weekly meeting that was a group lab meeting where I would see all my lab mates and we would either talk about our recent progress or we would present some recent research in the field that we found interesting and relevant. Even with all that going on, I still had a decent amount of time to chill, hang out with friends. I'd usually go out once a week to grab beers or something like that. Though in the final three months of my program, as the deadline for the thesis wound down, uh, there is definitely a lot more cramming and a bit less free time. And that's a theme you'll see throughout master's students, I think. As for the money, the around $38,000 I was paid by the university after taxes and tuition comes as part of a standard deal that every thesis-based master's student gets. Now, there are a couple strings attached. I had to TA in my first semester, and in my second semester, I took a research assistant position. Uh, but after that, the final year was just me getting paid for doing my own research. It wasn't really an incredible amount of money, but it was enough to live, and it certainly is nice to get paid to basically study what you want to study. Like, you can't ask for more than that, right? <laughs> Now that I've graduated, however, and I am doing a startup, I am making negative money. So if you do want to support the channel and subscribe, it does go a long way. As you can probably tell, I loved my master's program. However, not all master's programs are created equal. And some of the biggest differences in programs will actually be determined by which country you go to. I'm really just familiar with the US and Canadian systems because I'm a US citizen and I went to school in Canada. So I'll be talking about those in this video. Most of the computer science master's programs I know of in Canada are research oriented and they're pretty well funded, meaning that you get paid while you're doing your master's. And also because the tuition is typically pretty low compared to at least the US, that means you can often do an entire master's program without going into any debt. In the US, most computer science master's programs are kind of the opposite. They are so expensive, they'll typically put you in around 20K to 80K in debt, and they tend to be more course oriented with less of a focus on research. That doesn't mean you can't or will not do research in a US-based master's program, but it's not always the main focus of master's programs in the US. Because these two types, these course-oriented and these research-oriented master's programs are so different, 
People typically do them for, as you could expect, very different reasons. A master's in the US is generally thought of more as an extension of your bachelor's. It's focused on learning through courses, and if you want to go into research, you would probably instead be encouraged to apply straight to a PhD and skip the master's entirely. In contrast to that, a thesis-based master's program in Canada is typically thought of as more of a stepping stone towards a PhD or a way to break into research. And because of that, it's structured a lot more like a mini PhD where you have funding and you have that focus on research. For these reasons, I almost always recommend people to check out thesis-based master's programs in Canada if they're interested in getting into ML research with a master's. There are absolutely still reasons someone might want to do a computer science master's in the US. For example, maybe you got into Stanford. You should definitely consider that. Maybe you want the average 33% salary increase that comes with doing a master's, but you're not so interested in research. Maybe you're coming from another field and you just want to use the master's as an entry point to the field. Or maybe you're doing a combined bachelor's and master's program where that master's program will only take one extra year, in which case you're getting a lot more for the time you're putting into it. But if your goal is to get into ML research and either you don't have the CV to jump straight into a PhD, or maybe you don't know if you want to commit to a PhD, well then a research-based master's program can be a great option. If you do decide to go down this route and you do want to do ML research, I highly recommend you check out Amy, Mila, and the Vector Institute. They are all Canadian government-funded AI agencies that provide great communities and a lot of funding opportunities for students that want to get into AI and machine learning in Canada. With my knowledge, I'm only really able to speak to schools in the US and Canada as I've done. Uh, so if you come from a different country and you know what it's like over there, uh, please do share that in the comments. But otherwise, I hope you found this interesting and thanks for watching.